Boilermakers are in their toughest stretch of the season. In the stretch right now, they're playing seven teams ranked in the net top 30, and that streak will uh, come to an end on Wednesday night when Purdue takes on the Nebraska Cornhuskers at Pinnacle Bank Arena. Then the Boilermakers will come back home on Monday to take on the Fighting Illini of Illinois, and that both of those games will be 8 o'clock Eastern tip-offs. Good evening, everybody. It's been a long time, but we're back here at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union. It is the Katie Gerald Show. We're going to be joined by the head coach after the next break. Uh, the Boilermakers again with a couple of games this week, and uh, we'll have uh, Rashonda Jones joining us a little bit later on in the show, one of Purdue's outstanding freshmen from South Bend, Washington, so stay tuned for that. You can follow along tonight on Facebook, on Instagram, and on X on the Purdue Athletic site, and if you've got any questions, let us know where you're watching tonight on Facebook as well. We'll have the head coach when we come back. It is the Katie Gerald Show, presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. There by Jones to intercept that, what was heading to Green and sends it and goes straight into line and one. And that's a big play there. Favor for them. Oh, yeah. And Rashunda Jones has such speed. And for me, it's her agility. Fakes the shot, fires it to Layden in the corner. And McKenna Layden gets a three to four. And that's exactly what the Boilermakers needed. The double team on Terry. Gets it out to Reynolds. Reynolds fires that one and fires it down. And that is a great offensive play by the Boilermakers. The Boilermakers once again look good defensively. Can they look good offensively? Ellis, yes. And finally, the Aussie comes alive. Again, the half, Jones, nice steal, and Ellis, a great three. And finally, he comes away with points in the paint. Ellis open here, she sends a three, sends it down. That's what the Boilermakers need. Hot streak alive, the game tied, and Terry, five seconds on the shot clock, puts the mid-range one up, falls to the right, on the rebound, gets that one to fall. Plus the ability to finish through the contact, that's part of what makes Janae Terry such a good player. She just has that grit and determination to power through, and she now has a chance to make it. Breaks the high post, Ellis, no look past Ashley Stevenson, gets it controlled, and Swanson sends it, and sends it down. Terry into McKenna Layden. Stevenson against Parks. Parks physical on defense. Ashley Stevenson beats that and gets it to fall. As that, try to find that man wasn't able to do so. The baller maker's on a quick break here. Terry drives, takes McGrillet-Shakova, gets physical and gets the point and the foul. Staying strong, staying through it and throwing it off the window. Excellent timing on that shot, couldn't have gotten it up. And that's a huge bucket to get. The difference between a six and an eight point game is massive. That's a lot. You're listening to the Katie Gerald Show on 95.3 Bob FM. Welcome back to the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union. We're live at Walk Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. It's been a long time since we've been back here, since before the holidays. Uh, we did the show remotely last week because of some uh, uh, icy weather outside, but. Uh, you know, when you sign up to play in the Big Ten, there are going to be good times, there are going to be bad times, and right now, uh, trying to turn things around here at, with the Boilermakers. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a tough time for us. Uh, January 2nd was the last time we won, it's, uh, and we feel it. Um, but I tell you what, this group, every single day, they, they come to practice, they work their tails off, they believe in, um, they believe that, that we're going to win the next game. And, um, you know, it hasn't translated on the road very well. But, um, you know, we've been, we've been right there the last couple home games. You look at these last three games, you you'd mentioned you had been 8-0 at home, but their last three have been against Iowa, <laughs> against Ohio State, and against Indiana. By the way, all three teams ranked today in the top ten nationally. Uh, the Iowa game was a tough one because they came out and shot the lights out. But you were toe-to-toe -to -toe with Indiana and Ohio State, had a chance to win both those games in the fourth quarter. Yeah. Um, you know, our, our, our team just locked into to the game plan, trusted it, um, fed off the, the great crowds that we've been getting at home, um, just came up a couple plays short. Uh, unfortunately, that momentum has not carried yet this season under the road. And I know that's something that you're trying to find an answer for, and everybody in the world's trying to find an answer. Uh, I saw a stat today that, uh, and, I, and I should have copied it, uh, it was about the top 10 teams right now in their road records this year. Top 10 teams on the men's side playing against unranked teams. Usually they win something around 70%. It's down around 40% this year 
it's hard to win on the road no matter what, and it's hard in this league because you've got some really good teams. Yeah, I, you know, I think that, that has a lot to do with, you know, our group is different because we're younger, but the, the portal plays a part of that. You know, when you go on the road and you're in a really rough environment, um, you, you want to be a part of a group that's going to stay connected. And you look at our men's teams going on the road and, you know, yesterday, a, a group that's been connected for a while. And I think that's why we were able to, to win so many road games last year. Cass, Ricky, Laisha. Laisha was new to our team, but we had some experience um, in a group that had been together. Um, and not a knock on our freshmen. They just haven't experienced it yet. Um, and they're getting a, a big taste of it. And, and we expect them to, to make plays in big moments. And we're going to change quite a bit up. We're, we're traveling at a different time, uh, eating different different meetings, um, you know, see if we can find a, find an answer to, to being better on the road. Let's talk a little bit about the last road game. It was at Michigan State. Michigan State's one of those teams this year that I think has surprised some people. They really put the ball in the basket, averaging better than 80 points a game. They're ranked in the top 10 in scoring in the country. Um, and they, there's an old adage, we've talked about it for years, shoot it before you turn it over. Mm -hmm. They only average 11 turnovers a game, but they shoot 26 threes a game. Yeah, and they put you in a lot of problems. You know, they space the floor out really well. They run a lot of high on ball screens. They're, they're big, can pick and pop, and she's active and, you know, moves well off her feet. Um, you know, obviously, we turned the ball over. Uh, missed some open shots there in the first the first quarter. Stayed stayed with it a little bit, um, and the second quarter just got away from us. Um, you know, just got to figure it out. You know, we've got one win on the road, and uh, it's it's just not been good. I think the other thing for Michigan State, and you see this sometimes when you're having great seasons, uh, the players like Tori Osmond and uh, Halleck, Theron Halleck had career best nights against Purdue, and those are, you know, sometimes you have teams that can have players that are going to score 20 points on any given. Unfortunately, both of those did against Purdue on Wednesday. You know, the thing about those two, those two kids, like, they're not the most talented players in our league, but those two kids play very, very hard. Um, and they exposed, you know, us not playing hard against them. Uh, and it was a frustrating night on every account because we knew even before the game that we were not going to be able to get home. A lot of fog. Uh, actually, it was pretty foggy the night before. We were lucky to get in. Uh, we did get in, but couldn't get home until uh, the next day. And so uh, there was a lot of time for soul searching. And I know we all did it as a group <laughs> after the game on Wednesday night, just trying to come up with some solutions. Yeah. Um, you know, in, in our group, like, they went out to dinner. Obviously, we all, we all went out to dinner as a staff. And uh, we came in the next day. We, you know, we were short and light on the court on Friday. Thursday was supposed to be our day off. Didn't really have one just because of the travel day. Um, you know, I mean, we played. And we just it tried to try to get it all together, and, and, and our group responded on Sunday. I know we lose a game, and there's no moral victories. Like, we're tired of losing. It's Nobody's nobody's happy with it. Um, but we went head-to-toe um, with the number eight team in the country. All right, we're going to talk about that game on the Buckeyes when we come back. First, we'll take a break. This is the Katie Gerald Show, presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. With the rebound. Way to crash the glass. Three ball is on the way by Madison Raven, and it is good. Jones is so quick. Forces a lot of rotation. Jones. Off glass and will head to the free throw line. As well as Sophie Swanson, number 31. Rashenda Jones with a shot clock getting very low, kicking it to Mary Ashley Stevenson. That'll work. Ash. Absolutely, and especially the effort you talk about the interior. Ashley Steven was working on in Indiana only with one player from the state of Indiana, and she's not playing. It's in the parish. Terrific take by Janae Terry. Just really have it. Caitlin Harper, no. Oford goes to Purdue. Abby Ellis, left from three. The whistle. Janae Terry aggressive on the glass, and we know she's a great passer as well. Kicks it out to the Aussie. Off the mark, Rashunda Jones with the rebound. To a seat of Hazen and Green, and it's a three-point play opportunity. Chloe Moore McNeil off the mark, and here come the Boilers. Two seconds, Rashunda Jones. Shanza Jones with just her eighth three-pointer. The three-point shooting has just been incredible for Indiana. 13 of 20 from distance. Reversing well, a 
underneath is Caitlin Harper. That was gorgeous. Inside to Stevenson. What a tough shot by the freshman. She'll head to the line. Terry with the rebound. Way to crash the glass. Everyone needs a little playing time, so before a Purdue basketball game or any time throughout the week, stop by walk-ons here in the Purdue Memorial Union where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. Boilermakers will take on Illinois, Illinois a week from tonight, so our next Katie Gerald show will be on Tuesday night next week, and then we're Mondays the rest of the season. Next game broadcast coming up on Wednesday night at Nebraska. All right, coming back home yesterday against Ohio State, a team that you shocked last year at their place, so you know that they probably had this one circled. Uh, to try to get back. But, you know, sometimes when you play certain teams, Jane and I talked yesterday, you just feel like you match up. You feel like you can beat them. It was apparent from the opening tip yesterday, your team really had belief that they could win that game. Yeah, I thought we had a really two days, two good days of prep. Um, they were they were connected. Uh, I think they believe. I, I just feel like we've got a different confidence about who we are um, at home. But uh, they, they trusted the game plan. They locked into the game plan. Um, you know, it's – it's a J.C. Sheldon desperation three at the end of a, the third quarter that, that goes their way. It's a, you know, I thought we got some open looks in the first half that didn't go in, um, the ones that we made uh, in Columbus last year. Right. Um, but just the way the ball bounced, and they made one more play than we did. Uh, by the way, if you haven't seen the J.C. Sheldon shot, I've been at Mackey Arena now since 1978. I have never seen a shot higher in yeah. the air than that shot. If you watch it on TV, the ball goes out of the frame for yeah, about a wild. second and a half. It's wild. I don't know that Janae could have contested it any better um, without fouling her. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, early on, they got off to a 7 nothing lead, and then uh, one of your freshman starters, uh, Mary Ashley Stevenson, goes down and gets popped in the nose. Uh, got a question here from John. How is her nose? How is she doing today? Yeah, she's good. She, she went through practice, had a mask on. Um, doesn't go to see the ENT until Thursday, so I'm not sure if it's broken or not. Swollen. Um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be nice and bruised. She's, we've got a mask uh, getting shipped to Lincoln, so she'll be in a black mask. Um, you know, she, she told us, you know, like, if if I can play, I'm gonna play. But if I'm gonna be out there and hurt us, then I don't want to. I don't want to put us in the, in that position. Um, you know, it, we wanted to wait till halftime. She did have a little bit of a headache. Uh, you know, when it happened, and we want to make sure there weren't any more concussion symptoms. Right. And her headache went away. The dizziness the dizziness went away, and um, she came back in what 17 minutes, had 13 points, and seven rebounds, five on the offensive end, and, and battled her tail off for us. And for anybody who's ever been cut in the bridge of the nose, there's not a whole lot of meat there. So it was pretty apparent when she was down on the floor that uh, there was a lot of blood coming out. Yeah, and uh, Cody is uh, quite the athlete, powerful athlete that came down and hit her, and our group rallied around her. Um, Shauna came in and, and played some really good minutes there for us. And, you know, late in the game, we were we were calling two freshmen's names um, most, of, most of that game. Uh, there in the fourth quarter, and those two just stepped up and responded for us. You know, a lot of encouraging signs from yesterday, but I thought one of the biggest encouraging signs was you got a lot of contributions from Mila Reynolds, who had five points and really gave you some solid play. McKenna Layden comes in and hits a three-point shot for you. Those two players, you know, you've got to get some depth here in the, as the Big Ten season goes on because you're going to get kids that are going to get tired. They're going to get more banged up. Uh, you got to have kids that are ready to step up and play. Yeah, we were talking about it in the office. Um, you know, it's it, Caitlin's played a lot, a lot of minutes, and uh, Elena's working and getting better. But having Mila just two days, she just looked confident. She looked locked into what we were doing. Knew we were going to sit in a zone. Knew she was going to be able to sacrifice her body and take some charges. Uh, but when she when she came out, popped and, and kind of hesitated, and then hit the three and it went in. Um, if she can continue to do that for us, um, it'll it'll just go a really long way for us. And we see it both on the men's side and on the women's side. When you've got your five player that can go out and hit a shot from three-point range and make the other center come out, uh, that gives you a lot of advantages. And most of it is one of their best rebounders is 20 feet from the basket. Yeah, she's uh, I mean, like I, there's just been something different about Mila the last week or so. And, uh, you know, like I said, uh, told her today, like just let that Mila keep showing up because uh, that, that Mila can really help us. You got it down yesterday. You were you were down seven after the J.C. Sheldon shot. Then they got it up to nine early in the fourth quarter, and they thought it was one of those games, okay, which way does this go now? Does this become a double-digit loss at home? And I, and I thought, again, that the fact that you fought back, you got it down to a two-possession game with a couple of minutes to play, and then, you know, it's, it's a three-point game. They missed a couple of free throws. Unfortunately, you couldn't grab the rebound mm -hmm. cleanly 
and uh, as a result, only got up to mid court to get your shot away. Yeah, we missed a uh, we missed a pinch on a box out um, that maybe would have allowed us to get a clean cleaner rebound. But uh, I, th I thought Shonda did a great job of chasing it down, uh, keeping her dribble alive, and getting it up to Abby and giving ourselves a chance. Um, I think Abby didn't realize that maybe she could have taken a dribble to get a better look at it. But at that time, yeah. it's it's you know it's desperation. You're just praying that the the ball finds the net. And you and I talked after the game. If you had given another second or two, knowing Rashonda Jones' speed, and she's able to dribble, I mean, she can get the ball up three quarters of the court in a real hurry. Yeah, um, faster than anybody I think I've ever seen. Uh, the mood after the game, though, I know, again, you talked about no moral victories, but you had to be happy with the fight that your team showed. Happy, yeah, it, but you, you look at our group, and our group is hungry. Um, it's, been, it's been too long for us to from, you know, us just to continue to lose. Um, but like I said, they're not quitting. Um, it's, it's just a matter of us, like, trying to figure out how do we bottle this up and take it with us on the road. Um, you know, we got nine games left, what, five on the road and four at yep. home, and um, we're going to have to win some, some games here down the stretch. All right, we'll have more of the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union after this on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Just Tim. Tim, my guy. Hey, Tim, I just want to congratulate you. Congratulations on 1,000. Congrats on a 1,000 career games. We are grateful for the memories you've brought us courtside with your passion and enthusiasm. We can honestly say the best broadcaster in the land resides in West Lafayette, Indiana. It's really amazing. You, you sit down, you put a headset on, and sometimes you don't know who you're talking to or you don't know who's listening. And, and to be able to do something for the university that you went to, um, the university that you've called home for more than 30 years, um, it's really special, and it, it's, uh, believe me, as, as much as that melts my heart to watch it, I, I'm, I'm just touched that people thought I had any sort of an impact on not just the, the players and, and the, the coaches around the program, but the fans who listen to it as well. You know, I think the biggest compliment any broadcaster can get is to be called a professional, and I think that that's, if there's one word that I would hope would be associated, it's, it's that. It's, I, I came prepared every game. You try to keep your emotions somewhat in check, although you do have to, uh, basketball and football and all the sports are played with emotion, so I think they should be broadcast with some emotion. You just can't go over the top. From a game standpoint, uh, probably two or three games stand out. Certainly the national championship game, which, which was really so much pressure because it would have been wrong for that team not to have the happy ending that they deserve. Games fade over time, but it's the relationships you make and the people that I just heard from earlier, those are the things that stick with you forever. I got in at just the right time when Purdue women's basketball was taking off in the late 80s and early 90s. I think the program we could tell at that point was ready to skyrocket under, under Coach Dunn. But I wanted to say thank you to everybody who has stayed with the program in the good times and the bad times. Thank you for the kindness that you've shown me, the, the kind words, and, and even those who've had unkind words, I would just say thanks for listening. Uh, we appreciate the, the fact that you are interested in the sport and have a passion for it. So. Just um, a big, again, a big, big, big thank you. Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union. We're live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. Lafayette Limo, family-owned, women-owned, serving Greater Lafayette for over 33 years. Shuttles to and from Indianapolis and O'Hare airports 365 days a year. Make your reservations now at LafayetteLimo.com. Lafayette Limo, proud sponsor of Purdue Athletics. We've talked a little bit about the freshmen. Let's talk more about them because I think they're a group that's worth uh, touting. This freshman class right now, you've had two freshmen score in double figures in the same game seven times this season. The rest of the Big Ten combined has only done it eight times. And in Big Ten games, it's Purdue three and the rest of the conference two. So you know that you're getting production from them. Let's talk individually and start with Rashonda Jones, who we're going to have a little bit later on in the show. She has really given you a different dimension, especially on the offensive end. Yeah, um, and I mean, and the defensive end for that. Like, we could do a lot of ball screen coverages with her. Um, she's able to pick up the ball 94 feet um, and, and harass the other team's point guard. Um, guarding her in a ball screen would give me nightmares. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not so sure how you how you trying to wait to find a, find a way to stop it. Um, speed. Um, I think the next step for her, and we were able to watch some clips today, is getting in the paint and recognizing when the defense does collapse, kicking out the shooters. Um, you know, but you know she went for a little through a little couple games on her on her return where she just didn't get it going. But the kid worked, uh, got a gym, um, got saw the ball go through the net, went on the road to Penn State, had a good game, and then came back. Um, 
you know, against Indiana, and then yesterday against Ohio State played really well. The thing that really gives this old-timer's heart a, a, a jolt is the fact that she's got a mid-range game. Well, you just don't see that very much anymore in college basketball. Yeah, and, and her elevation is the same every time. Even when we shoot, um, you know, it's just – you know, me, her, and our, our GA Abby getting some shots up or watching her and Amaya get some shots up, it's the same It's the same elevation every single time. It's almost watching Chloe, Chloe go, you know, yep. serve it or, or spike it in there um, for volleyball. It's just the same elevation every time. Um, she And she's just getting better, right? She's starting to, to read ball screens better. But um, as she gets more playing time and then, it, you know, matures into, into her career, it, it's – Number two is going to be very special. Mary Ashley Stevenson, I think, is a player that we knew had some toughness. We saw that again yesterday when she got popped in the nose and was able to come back and really contribute for you. Uh, she told us, though, at the beginning of the season when we had her on, you know, when you played a few games in the Bronx growing up, you <laughs> learned to get tough pretty quickly. I think she has adapted to life in the Big Ten pretty well. Yeah, and she, uh, she takes a beating down there, that's for sure. Whether she's at the four or the five, you know, sometimes she's in there at the five and, and battling against some – you know, fifth-year seniors, 18-year-old um, kid battling against some, you know, 22, 23-year-old uh, girl woman, really. Um, MA's got a lot of brothers, probably picked on her growing up, uh, but uh, she, she does. She plays her heart out every single possession, um, you know, and just uh, makes you really proud because of the way she competes. We're seeing more and more as the season goes on of Sophie Swanson. I think it's still uh, important for people to understand she's about a year off her ACL mm -hmm. surgery, right? It was about, was it January of last mm -hmm. year? Um, so it's really hard to come back any sooner than that. And I think we're seeing the glimpses every once in a while of what offensive skills she can bring to the floor. Yeah, I think, you know, maybe if she's healthy, you know, she's probably in that same conversation as, as the other two. But um, it's tough coming back from ACL. I remember when I did and, um, it, it, you know, there's days where you, you still battle, you know, pain and, you know, swelling and stuff that she has to manage, whether, whether she can get through a practice, did she give enough reps, you know. Um, but that kid has something different uh, to her. Uh, and the more time, you know, she can get this year, uh, but then going into the spring and summer, making sure she's 100% healthy, I feel like she can have a really, really good career here. McKenna Layden hit a three-point shot yesterday, and uh, she's, uh, again, learning the Big Ten game. But the one thing you can't teach is a guard to be six feet two. Yeah, long arms. Obviously, she's got to get – you know, she knows she, you know, her extra conditioning sometimes is in the weight room trying to get a little bit stronger. But that's really her frame. If we can get her just wiry strong, um, like Madison, McKenna really understands how the game's supposed to be played. Um, so there's a lot of work we can do in the off season with her, but um, – you know, she she played a lot of a lot of minutes at Michigan State. She was the only one in the in the positive on the mm -hmm. you know plus minus at the end of the game. I uh, thought she competed really well, and then yesterday came in and gave us some big big minutes. Uh, Emily Monson, a player who again who's trying to find her way a little bit, but has shown some glimpses and another developmental player that you hope will really contribute in the next couple of years. A kid that just works her tail off. Um, you know, texted me yesterday after the game. Hey, coach, uh, let's work out at 11. Got you. We'll be there. Um, you know, committed to, to getting better, committed to helping our team win. You know, we went around the circle to, at shoot-around yesterday. What can you bring? Like, everybody, tell us what you're going to bring to the game today. And um, hers was, I'm going to cheer up. I'm going to stand up and cheer every single time we do something well. I'm going to run. I'm going to be the first one on the court to give everybody a high five. The kid understands what her job is, and she's going to give us the best that she can doing that. And a quick uh, reminder, we've got Amaya Reynolds, who's redshirting this year because of injury, but she's a player that we're starting to see as she's getting more into shape now and getting that foot healed up. She's going to be a real player for you. Yeah, she, she runs a lot of scout team for us, um, watches film upstairs with us, does some works, workouts with Alex. Uh, but she does some things on the court that uh, just kind of make you smile right now. There's going to be a lot of smiling in the future. All right, we're going to talk to one of those freshmen, Rashunda Jones, when we come back. It's the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Against Southern Indiana. Terry with the rebound, and this time the Boilermakers convert. Offensive rebound starts off the offense. The Boilermakers have not gotten a lot of their usual offensive help. They average three starters in double figures. The distributor of this Boilermaker offense, two assists here today into Harper, and she gets it off the glass. Knocked their field goal percentage up considerably. Both teams now shooting above 40% from the field. Madison Layton with an uncontested three. You cannot leave her open. She's one for one here in the second. 
Terry finds Ellis uncontested. The Energizer Bunny strikes. 11 points from the Aussie. Rashunda Jones dribbles in, pulls up for a long two, rebounded by Layden. Dish out Harper uncontested. Terry with the dime, Harper with the triple. Take another look, uncontested. It's an easy one that goes from Caitlin Harper. Terry finds Layden on the wing. Jones comes in from the corner, finds Mila Reynolds, and one for the Boilermakers. Most likely won't see her again until the fourth quarter. Herder out to her teammate. She loses that ball. Thompson barely fighting in transition as Jayla Smith lays it in for an easy bucket. Nine point lead for Purdue. Terry intercepts that pass. Rashunda Jones, Boilers have numbers. Layden gets fouled and draws. And one for the Boilers. Called in by Pettikert. Adams puts it right in the Purdue Global is Purdue's accredited and affordable online solution for working adults. Persistence pays off at Purdue Global. Boilermakers and the Cornhuskers on Wednesday night. I think both of those, the only nicknames of any schools in the college basketball, I don't think there are any other Boilermakers or Cornhuskers out there, so we really don't need to tell you the schools. We will, though. So 8 o'clock tip, 7.45 will be our start time. Uh, Rashunda Jones joins us. Uh, Rashunda is from South Bend Washington High School. Uh, you have four siblings, right? Yeah. Where are you in the pecking order of the four? Or I'm of, in the Of the middle. five, I guess. I'm in the middle. So I have an older brother, an older sister, and then two younger sisters. All right. How much basketball playing, how much athletics went on in the uh, – Jones household growing up? Not a lot. My dad was the only basketball player. Um, my dad, he played for Washington also. Mm -hmm. um, and w when he would play, like a lot of people tell me like he had a very quick first step. Like everybody in South Bend, everybody around the Indiana area would be like, yeah, he could have went pro. He could have did this. He could have did that. And I was just like, every time like someone shows me a picture or anything, I just be like, wow. Like I, like I represent him so much. And I, I used to do cheerleading, so I never got into basketball until my, um, my sixth grade year. And he goes, oh, you're just going to be a cheerleader. When I told him I wanted to be a basketball player, and I was like, no, I'm not. And he was just like, yes, you are. And I was like, okay, like, I'm going to show you. And then, like, I tried out my sixth grade year, and I made varsity. And then ever since then, it's been, like, a role. So genetics do play a part in that first step, right? That quick first step. It's, Definitely, it I got it from my dad. Um, I, I had my. I went home last night, and my wife asked me why. Does everybody call Rashonda Spider? And I said, Yeah. And she said, Why? I said, I don't know, but I'm going to ask her. Why does everybody call you Spider? Um, so I got that nickname in high school. Um, well, coming out of my middle school, my eighth grade year. So coming into high school, um, from my high school coach, uh, Coach Stephen Reynolds. Um, he gave me that because we were watching film one day, and he goes, like, Shonda, you're long. Like, you get places, like, quick. Like, we're going to start calling you the spider. And I was like, what? And he was like, yeah, the spider. Like, that's, that's, that's dope. And I was like, yeah, like, we're going to do that. And so ever since then, it just took off from there. So everybody calls you spider now. Yeah. Uh, you were part of a state championship team your junior season, correct? Yeah. Uh, and you played with uh, some of your current teammates, the Reynolds sisters. So what was that like? And, and the fact that you're all here now, how exciting is that for you? Uh, it's very exciting for them to um, be here playing with me. You know, um, when, I, when Mila and Amaya committed to Maryland, um, I committed to Purdue. And then once Mila entered that transfer portal and Amaya – decommitted it was just like I was just on him like I was texting him like hey you guys should come here like we trying to win we can do this over again and just the experience that we have at Washington we know how we have the chemistry and it just brings so much like we can bring so much to this program and I think we can bring Purdue back to where it needs to be you know I've always been impressed and I think it's always great to have people who've had winning high school careers because they understand the pressure of playing in big games so I would assume playing in a state championship and playing some of the big games you played up there has to prepare you for what you faced here oh yeah definitely and I come from a winning program so it's never fun to lose I, I mean it's never fun to lose so like even though like we're on the streak nobody enjoys it but we just have to learn from it we have to keep picking up you know 
Um, we have to take it on the road. Like Coach KG always says, like we have to find some way to bottle it up and just take it on the road, just like, just like we did in high school. What number did you wear in high school? I wore number two. So why, why? So you've carried that forward. Is there a particular reason, or was that just the one they handed you? So I was number 22 in middle school, and then my dad was like, that was my number. And I was like, okay. And then, but in high school, like, there was just some type of change. I don't know what made me pick two. Maybe just because 22 to two, I think. You know, those single digits are a little bit more memorable, so yeah. you, you do stand out. All right, we're going to talk about your transition to Purdue and your career here so far in your freshman season, but we need to take a break. It's the Katie Gerald Show, presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. There by Jones to intercept that what was heading to Green and sends it and goes straight into line and one. And that's a big play there. A favor for them. Oh, yeah, and Rashonda Jones has such speed, and for me, it's her agility. Fakes the shot, fires it to Layden in the corner, and McKenna Layden gets a three to four, and that's exactly what the Boilermakers needed. The double team on Terry. Gets it out to Reynolds. Reynolds fires that one and fires it down. And that is a great offensive play by the Boilermakers. The Boilermakers once again look good defensively. Can they look good offensively? Ellis, yes. And finally, the Aussie comes alive. In the half, Jones, nice steal, and Ellis, a great three. And finally, he comes away with points in the paint. Ellis open here, she sends a three, sends it down. That's what the Boilermakers need. It's hot streak alive, the game tied, and... So Terry, five seconds on the shot clock, puts the mid-range one up, falls to the right. On the rebound, gets that one to fall. Plus the ability to finish through the contact. That's part of what makes Janae Terry such a good player. She just has that grit and determination to power through, and she now has a chance to make it. Breaks the high post, Ellis. No look past Ashley Stevenson. Gets it controlled, and Swanson sends it, and sends it down. Terry into McKenna Layden. Ashley Stevenson against Parks. Parks, physical on defense. Ashley Stevenson beats that and gets it to fall. Has that, tried to find McMahon, wasn't able to do so. The ball makers on a quick break here. Terry drives, takes McGrillich-Shakova, gets physical and gets the point and the foul. Staying strong, staying through it and throwing it off the window. Excellent timing on that shot, couldn't have gotten it up. And that's a huge bucket to get. The difference between a six and an eight point game is massive. That's a long three from Ellis. That falls. And Terry Cooley for someone. Welcome back to the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union. We're live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. Time for our Pro Boilers feature where we look at how former Purdue student athletes are doing their professional sports careers. Pro Boilers is presented by Indiana Kitchen Premium Pork Products. Get to know us at indianakitchen.com. Both our pro boilers and Indiana Kitchen are boiler made. Only two players to report this week and both playing in Spain. Ariana Harris had eight points and four rebounds in 26 minutes in an 81-71 loss on Saturday. Her team now 3-12 on the season. And the old lady keeps on rolling. 40-year-old Aya Traore, 21 points and 13 rebounds in 32 minutes. Her team won 78-67. They are 5-8 and eight this year, and she's averaging almost 12 points and 9 rebounds a game. Would you like to still be playing basketball at age 40? Um, if I can, yeah. I would love to just keep playing basketball. Like, basketball, when people say, like, basketball is life, like, that's what I believe. <laughs> like, eat, sleep, and breathe basketball, watch film, get in the gym, just continually just talking about it. I just love basketball. Well, that's a great transition to my next question because that is the, how is the adjustment coming from high school to college where you not only have basketball 24 hours a day, but you've also got to go to classes here. Yeah. Um, the transition has been good. I mean, the cl my classes fit my schedule. So, like, I have an 830 class, you know, go to study table, and then, you know, me and KG will probably get up shots around, like, 11 o'clock and then go back and then – maybe do a little film and then come back for practice and, or a lift or whatever we have. But it's been a great balance. Has anything surprised you so far playing in your first season here at Purdue? Um, I just think how my confidence is. My confidence, sometimes it can be a little shaky, but recently I've just been, like, my confidence has been, like, through the roof. Like, when I'm on the court, it's just, it's just me. It's just our team versus the other team. 
We feel confident when you're on the floor as well, so I'm glad that you feel that confidence. Where did that mid-range game come from? I, we talked with Katie about coming off ball screens and being very uh, fluid with a basketball. Is that something you've really developed here, or was that something you did a lot in high school? Um, I had to develop that during high school to get ready for college. So um, my high school coach will always tell me, you know, you're not going to always be able to get to the rim. Like, there's 6'7", six, there's 6'3", six, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, six, and up. Like, you're not always going to be able to do that. And so I just remember when he was teaching me and Amaya, like, he was just like, you got to put that bad boy over your head and jump as high as you can. <laughs> and, like, we had been working on it countless hours, like, day in and day out. And I feel like that really helped my game, and I really appreciate him for that. We talked during the commercial break. You've had the opportunity your freshman year to play in front of some huge crowds, a sellout at Mackey, another big crowd against uh, uh, Indiana, a big crowd yesterday against Ohio State. It has to be pretty exciting to come down that tunnel and see every seat filled. Man, it feels so great because, you know, I come from a winning program, like I said. So um, just just being around that atmosphere in high school and then for it to be, you know, triple the size that it was in high school is just amazing. Just like the energy. Our student section is amazing. Like there's there's no better place than Mackey. You had a chance as a freshman to guard earlier this year the player that's probably going to be the national player of the year in the first pick in the WNBA draft, Caitlin Clark. We talked during the break. She's a pretty tough cover, isn't she? Yeah, she's really she's really tough. I mean, she deserves everything coming her way. She's not like she's not rushed. She's patient. She's just she doesn't have to do a lot. She's just very fluent in her game. Well, Rashonda Jones is going to have a big, big impact on this uh, Purdue program over the next three years. We really can't wait to see how, how you take it. And let's fi finish this freshman year off on a good note. Yeah, let's finish it. Thanks for coming on tonight. Thank you. All right, we'll have the head coach back after this. It's the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. A rebound. Way to crash the glass. Three ball is coming away by Madison Layden, and it is good. Jones is so quick. Forces a lot of rotation. Jones. Off glass and will head to the free throw line. As well as Sophie Swanson, number 31. Rashenda Jones with a shot clock getting very low. Kicking it to Mary Ashley Stevenson. That'll work. Absolutely, and especially the effort you talk about the interior. Ashley Steven was working on and Indiana only with one player from the state of Indiana. And she's not playing. It's Indy Parrish. Terrific take by J. Terry. Just wouldn't have it. Caitlin Hartford, no. Oford goes to Purdue. Abby Ellis. Left one three. The whistle. Janae Terry aggressive on the glass, and we know she's a great passer as well. Kicks it out to the Aussie. Off the mark, Rashunda Jones with the rebound. To a seat of Cousin and Green, and it's a three-point play opportunity. Chloe Moore McNeil off the mark, and here come the Boilers. Two seconds, Rashunda Jones. Shunza Jones with just her eighth three-pointer. The three-point shooting has just been incredible for Indiana. 13 of 20 from distance. Reversing well underneath is Caitlin Harper. That was gorgeous. Inside to Stevenson. What a tough shot by the freshman. She'll head to the line. Terry with the rebound. Everyone needs a little playing time, so before a Purdue basketball game or any time throughout the week, stop by walk-ons in the Purdue Memorial Union where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. All right, Coach, it's uh, about 50 minutes past the hour, and we have not brought up your Kansas City Chiefs, so I'm going to say congratulations Thank to the you. Chiefs. Uh, going to the Super Bowl for the fourth time in five years. Uh, we did get a question from John who notices that you're going to be playing in the Super Bowl the same day Purdue plays at Indiana. Wants to know how fast you'll be driving to get back in time to watch your Chiefs play in that Super as Bowl. As fast as that bus will go. Um, so 2 o'clock start, right? I might petition the Big Ten to get an earlier start um, if we could. Um, but you would think 2 o'clock start doesn't 
As long as it doesn't go to overtime, it goes to overtime. I stop in Indy and watch it with my family. Well, you have to take care of business and regulation. Got to win. Got, there got you go. To, got there you to, go. Got uh, to. What we were talking about pro boilers before, and the, the, the wins yesterday by San Francisco and Kansas City ensure that at least one boilermaker will be getting a Super Bowl ring because George Karloftis playing for the Chiefs. Jalen Graham is in his freshman season at San Francisco, so one of those two gets a, a Super Bowl ring. Uh, great games yesterday, but I was thinking too. You, you look at and I'm sure the TV ratings for that were huge. The TV ratings this year for women's basketball mm -hmm. have been enormous. And, you know, we talked about Caitlin Clark with Rashonda Jones, the fact that they have sold out every game this year, and she is bringing a new audience to girls and women's basketball. That's it's all for the good. Yeah, it's been great. Um, and, you know, our home crowds, we can't thank them enough. I know we're struggling, but they're still showing out for us and, and, and bringing us a lot of energy and – Got a big one Monday night um, against Illinois. But, uh, you know, what Caitlin has done for our game is huge. But it's not just her. Like, what Angel Reese, you, you know, Paige Beckers, you go all across the, you know, Juju out in USC is going to be in the Big Ten next year. Um, it's just a, a special time for our game. And um, we'll, we're going to continue to, to, to kind of keep trying to elevate it the best we can here. You know, I know the focus for Purdue right now is on Purdue, but you do have to glance up. You've got three teams right now fighting for the Big Ten Championship. Indiana, Ohio State, and Iowa each have one loss, and they're going to play each other a lot in these last few weeks. It's going to be a great race for the conference championship. Yeah, it's going to be a wild race. And, you know, it's a, like you, you – Ohio State should – they should beat us, right, like on paper, right? And they were relieved to yes. get out of there last night. You know, the, when the horn sounded, you know, they were celebrating. Sometimes you, you know, as a really superior team, you go on the road and you play bad or, you know, you don't play up to par and you, you squeak one out. It's like, okay, finally. But, like, they were really celebrating because they know, um, a lot of teams know that uh, you, you've got to find a way to win these games on the road because the, uh, the race between those three is going to be something down the stretch here. Well, let's get back to your team. Uh, you know, in the midst of a losing streak, trying to get out of it, how do you stay and how do you keep your team staying positive while also not hiding from the things that are causing you problems right now. Yeah, a good balance of, you know, a lot of film watching. Film doesn't watch, uh, film doesn't lie. So a lot of film watching, um, you know, what needs to be improved, what, what, what needs to get better, but also like what can we continue to build on and what's working for us. Um, you know, but also too trying to step step back and take the pressure off us, uh, have fun, uh, play the game because you love it. Um, because obviously, you know, like th the pressure is there, like there's, Man, we haven't won in so long, and it just kind of builds and builds and builds. So um, it's our job to kind of just relax them, you know, get back to, to playing a game they love um, and, and with each other and for each other. Um, so it happens that we're going to go to a really tough place on, on Wednesday um, in Lincoln and, and try to figure out how to win that game. We talked about Mary Ashley Stevenson before and her fight inside. I think Caitlin Harper's given you everything she's got, and she's a player who cracked the 1,800-point mark. You look at all the players in women's college basketball right now, she's in the top 35 in scoring in all the players in the country yeah. for her career. And, and she's been through it all. Um, I asked her the other day if she – if we could petition for a seventh year, would she come back? And uh, she kind of laughs. I don't know if my body can take it, but she gives us everything she has out there. Um, it's just a kid that you kind of wish you could coach, you know, every year for, for the rest of your life just because of who she is and what she brings to your ball club. All right, final segment of the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union is coming up on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Just Tim. Tim, my guy. Hey, Tim, I just want to congratulate you. Congratulations on a 1,000. Congrats on a thousand career games. We are grateful for the memories you've brought us courtside with your passion and enthusiasm. We can honestly say the best broadcaster in the land resides in West Lafayette, Indiana. It's really amazing. You, you sit down, you put a headset on, and sometimes you don't know who you're talking to or you don't know who's listening. And, and to be able to do something for the university that you went to, um, the university that you've called home for more than 30 years, um, it's really special and it, it's, uh, believe me, as, as much as that melts my heart to watch it, I, I'm, I'm just touched that people thought I had any sort of an impact on not just the, the players and, the, and the, the coaches around the program, but the fans who listen to it as well. You know, I think the biggest compliment any broadcaster can get is to be called a professional and I think that that's, if there's one word that I would hope would be associated, it's, it's that. It's, I, I came prepared every game. You try to keep your emotions somewhat in check, although you do have to 
Uh, basketball and football and all the sports are played with emotion, so I think they should be broadcast with some emotion. You just can't go over the top. From a game standpoint, uh, probably two or three games stand out. Certainly the national championship game, which, which was really so much pressure because it would have been wrong for that team not to have the happy ending that they deserve. Games fade over time, but it's the relationships you make and the people that I just heard from earlier. Those are the things that stick with you forever. I got in at just the right time when Purdue women's basketball was taking off in the late 80s and early 90s. I think the program we could tell at that point was ready to skyrocket under, under Coach Dunn. But I wanted to say thank you to everybody who has stayed with the program in the good times and the bad times. Thank you for the kindness that you've shown me, the, the kind words, and, and even those who've had unkind words, I would just say thanks for listening. Uh, we appreciate the, the fact that you are interested in the sport and have a passion for it. So just um, a big, again, a big, big, big thank this week's game plan is presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union, home of the official credit union for Purdue fans. Learn more about their products and services at purduefed.com. Two games before our next show, a game on Wednesday against Nebraska and a game on Monday against Illinois. Let's start with that Nebraska game. The Huskers, like Purdue, a little bit different team away from home and at home at Pinnacle Bank Arena. But, man, they have a great crowd. They're into the game, and they're going to be loud from the opening tip. Yeah, we are just talking about it. What a great environment to play into. Sometimes, you know, you go on the road, and obviously we talked about it. Penn State doesn't have a great – you know, Michigan State was – but when you go to an environment where there's a lot of people and, uh, you know, we just let's go be the villain and be the bad guys and see if we can come away. Alexis Markowski is another one of these unique players because she is a, a double figure, a double-double machine, but she's a player that can not only score inside, she can take you outside and hit those three-point shots. Uh, there's not a player on their team that, that doesn't shoot the three, um, so we're going to have to be able to guard the three-point line. Markowski's a problem because um, she can stretch and score inside, uh, moves really well for, you know, for, for a big, um, you know, laterally. Uh, Josh Shelley is, you know, one of the best point guards in our league, just clutch making big shots for them. Um, got, got a, and, and similar to us, they, they rely on a lot of freshmen. Um, so uh, a, battle of, uh, a battle of some experience and some young kids. Um, they're coming off two losses, so we've got we to make sure we're, we're extra hype and, which, and ready Which you're to go. hitting all the teams that way this Man, year. <laughs> every, every, it feels like every time we go on the road, we're, we're getting somebody, you know, after a loss and uh, – what did you tell me, Gene? What, the Gene, great what American Katie philosopher said? Gene Cady said, it's not who you play, it's when you play them. Yeah, we have not played teams at the right time, but uh, hopefully for, for us we can uh, find a way to, to bring what we have had at home um, on the road this time. Then an Illinois team on Monday night that I think has had a disappointing season based on last year, but again, they're fighting for their lives in the conference right now, and you know they're probably going to give you their best shot on Monday. Yeah, they will. Obviously, we, we were able to steal one at their place last year. Um, pretty much have the same team out of the couple pieces. Just has have had some unluck, um, some lucky unlucky events for them. Um, last night or yesterday afternoon, got down against Minnesota, but but was able to come back and, and find a way to win that ball game. So um, another tough one for us. Uh, they don't get any easier uh, in the Big Ten, and. Uh, so I tell you, tell your team that's why you're that's why you're here. That's why you you chose to come to Purdue, and you just got to find a way to step up to the challenge. By the way, Maura Braun from Minnesota mm -hmm. suffered an injury in that game yesterday. Had surgery today. Don't know if she'll be back this year, but you, you hate to see good players go out. Yeah, you hate it. You know, she's what third in the league in, in scoring. Um, just a lights out sophomore season. Uh, you know, prayers to her and, and obviously to, to Sid down at IU, yep. uh, battling, battling, and hopefully she can get back on the court. Not sure if it's going to happen, but uh, you just hate to, to see injuries impact the, the difference of ball games. Sheila Suds, let's get a road win on Wednesday. I Love it. second that emotion. Love we'll it, see you then. Love it. All right, thanks to our engineer tonight, Wes Scott, our producer, Roger Forsyth. Video by McCarty Cummings. The Boilermakers taking on the Nebraska Cornhuskers at 8 o'clock on Wednesday night. We'll have it at 745 for the head coach and for Rashonda Jones, I'm Tim Newton. This has been the Katie Gerald Show on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield.